All right, today is the day and welcome back to Builder Creator Studios. Well, I say welcome back, but maybe this is your first time, so welcome. Um, we are a prototype studio. You see around me, midst of an automotive project, the Arate Supercar. But today we're actually looking at a um, architectural piece that we're going to be building a mold to replace these parts. These are all originally turned out of wood and as if you can see, they're coming apart and this is actually one of the better ones on the house. Um, 13 or 14 of these need to be created. So we are going to just return a new one, take a mold off of it and then reproduce it in a urethane. That way we can uh, duplicate it and pull them out a little more rapidly than maybe turning each one individually. So let's go take a look and see how that's done. Of course, the first thing I had to do was to recreate the original in a little more solid piece of wood without the big bad cracks on it. So just went and put it on the lathe. And if you've ever done any lathe work, you'll know that this is kind of a, a satisfying job. You get to see action right away. So it's been a while since I'd been on the lathe, so I kind of enjoyed this. Spending a little time, one of the late fall days where it's still warm enough to be outside doing stuff. Anyway, finishing it off, kind of skip a little bit of steps here. After this step, of course, sand it down as fine as you can. And then once it's sanded down, ready to go, you can do the finishing you need to make it smooth and ready for the mold. Now this is a picture showing the original with the new one I've just cut. I've also added this little Florida Lee in clay, which won't make a difference to the mold. It doesn't care what the material is below it as long as it can be released from it. And of course, we also tapered off the bottom edge of it to make it a little more attractive as it's bolted onto the gable of the house. Anyway, that Florida Lee is carried out throughout the, the house, so it's a good touch to add to it. Now, once we have it, also missing from this sequence was uh, the Anita releasing agent, just to make sure you know that. And I always add colors to my mold making materials just so that you can tell when you're adding a second layer how thick it is and once you've covered up the original. So skipping ahead, one layer has been put on in the blue, now we're applying this red. And you just saw me mixing it and it was a lot thinner than this. This has actually been thickened up with a thickening or thixotropic agent called cabocil, which is a fumed silica. My father used to call it lighter than air because when you would try to mix it into the rubber or material that you were thickening, it would uh, tend to float in the air and uh, it's pretty dangerous. Uh, one of those things you always want to use a respirator for. And of course, you'll see me using a respirator in another stage when I'm actually on video using the product. So we're trying to build up a uh, three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch thick on this part of the mold. Just go ahead and smooth it around. It does not have to be actually smooth. In fact, you do want a few protrusions to stick up that the backup mold, which you'll see coming up, will hang on to. And in fact, I actually add a few little blobs or they call them buttons. They're not too smooth and button looking. They're just like a little blob that sticks up off the mold that the next layer, the backup mold, will be able to lock onto and hold so that the mold won't sag down inside before we apply the materials into the mold. Also kind of missed earlier in the steps is that this is being held in a vise so that I could work on it, but that piece of wood that's sticking out of the bottom of it is actually going to be our pouring spout when it's finished. So also applying our silicone rubber mold to that piece of wood, the spout, we'll call it from now on, I guess. No more footage to show how this uh, is mixed up. Yeah, basically the consistency of, I don't know, some marshmallow cream or something we could say. If you start putting it on and it starts sagging or running down, all you need to do is just go back and add a little more of the thickening agent to it. As soon as you get it to cling to it, that's about the consistency. Now here I'm using 
the fumed silica to create a parting line. So I've just added some thickened silicone to the center line of the part. And instead of uh, smoothing this silicone out with my fingers and having it stick to my fingers, and dip my fingers in the cabosil, just makes a little parting agent that keeps it from sticking to my fingers. Also building a little flange here around the pouring spout so that when I put the backup mold, the rubber will come around the edge of the backup mold so I can pour right into that spout. And once we have that parting line done, it'll be ready to put our backup mold on. You can also see up on the top, a couple of the little buttons as we call them, the little blobs that will actually lock into the backup mold to keep that flat surface of the mold from sagging into the cavity where we're going to be creating our parts at. And it looks like we're just about done with uh, the silicone. I'm ready to start putting our backup material on there. Now here we're using, instead of a plaster backup, I use a, a material that's called the Plasti Paste. It's a urethane two-part component made just for this creating backup molds, and I use it for other parts as well, but here, use it for exactly what it's created for. Two-part urethane mixed by weight or volume creates this nice, trowelable paste, and we're just applying it to the first side, right up to the parting line that we created with that uh, silicone that we fingered that releasing agent on. Once we get that first part covered, we're halfway there. One thing about this plastic paste or any urethane is that it is extremely sticky. Once it gets on you, it is hard to get off. Once cured on your hands, the solvents are even difficult to use solvents to clean it off. So I use a little technique here that we'll see in a moment to uh, smooth it out. This shell needs to be the you know, same thing as the silicone, about 3 16th to a quarter of an inch is plenty to make it strong enough for this size of a part. If you get any bigger, you can reinforce that with um, wooden sticks, dowels, even steel bars to strengthen your backup mold. I think we've seen plenty of this, haven't we? Okay, well, let's move on. Now I'm gonna be a, should have bought stock in the Glad Cling Wrap Company. Because yeah. I use a lot of this stuff. It is very inexpensive rather than using actual pill ply materials for FRPs. Pick it up your grocery store cling wrap, saran wrap, any of those products will work. I just place it over it so that I can smooth out the urethane without getting it sticking on my hands or anything else. Cover it with the peel ply, the saran wrap. Smooth out your surfaces. Gets you a little finer finish than uh, Trying to trowel it with this stick or a tool just never seems to quite get it as smooth as a process like this. Of course you can sand or grind it down once it's finished, but like I said, it gives you plenty of working time. You got a good 30-40 minutes to work with this stuff. Unless you have a little elevated temperatures, then it can go a little bit faster. Anyway, get it smoothed out right up to the parting line. Do the magic of editing. Here we are an hour later, taking off our pill ply. There is the first half of our backup mold. On to the second half. Now, before you actually do the second half, not shown in the video again, sorry. We also need to add a releasing agent to the first backup mold so that this urethane, this plastic paste does not come down. It will bond hard to that old layer. There is a polyvinyl alcohol 
PVA releasing agent. Put on that first backup mold so that this part will not bond to it. Let the same process trial it on. Get it about a quarter of an inch thick. Quarter of an inch thick is plenty of strength in this uh, urethane backup mold material. Unless you have a large flat surface, then you need some kind of a uh, reinforcement. As I mentioned before, dowels, piece of metal bar, something to add a little stiffness to it so it doesn't flex on you. Because if it flexes, the whole purpose of the backup mold is to keep the rubber in a rigid condition. If the backup mold flexes, the rubber is going to easily move with it and your part's going to be distorted. Hard to tell when editing these videos what's going to give me time to explain the process, to have a little discussion about it. Sometimes you realize that, hey, I could have skipped this. They understood it from the first side, but here it is. Finished with our backup mold. Now, of course, the trick is getting it all apart. First time that you demold something, you have to be a little bit careful just take your time, pry things apart, work them as you go. Always harder the first time to take it apart than actually the parts that you're going to be creating out of the mold seem to be a little easier to remove, as you, especially after you've done a few parts. Now here I'm just using a X-Acto razor blade to cut along the parting line that we created to divide the two halves of the mold. You can just cut straight through, but if you really want a little better mold that the edges will lock together, you have to learn to cut kind of a V groove so that these two halves of the mold will lock together and not slide in and leave you a bad parting line. There's the first half of the mold free coming off that clay fleur de lis hanging up in there. There it is. You see the floor lead did not stay to the wood, but it doesn't matter because it is captured in the rubber. This side's going to give us a little trouble because it has that pouring spout. I say just take your time, work things off. Just know that it might take some time, but this is the worst one you're going to have to deal with. Once we get this off, all the parts will be easier from here on out. At least that's what we try to tell ourselves. Original part, ready for the trash. Put the mold back together. This is just a trial fit. Of course, you do need to go and wash it really well because it will have the releasing agents still on the surface of the silicone. Wash them up, put it back together, and you're ready to make some parts with the thing. There it is, one finished mold. Alright, so here it is, ready to make some parts. I thought I'd put some parts at the end of this video, but I think it's going to be a little bit long in the pretty much a three-stage uh, urethane pour with some foam in the middle, so a little bit long, so we'll actually include that in another video. Also got some time coming up to get a bunch of uh, projects done to help accelerate the Aerotape project, those coming up, so we need to move on to those. We'll come back to this and show you the results when we get some parts made. Anyway, thanks for coming by. Stop by again.